first conversation of the day, an interesting one because it concerns us, as I always say, when you talk about information and what you get and what information can do is very powerful. And that's why we need to counter this information and misinformation. And under that umbrella today, we want to look at how can we recognize and uh, resist fake news? What are some of the fake news that has been out there in the public domain? And how can we verify this information what can we do about it? Uh, for this particular conversation, I am joined by two amazing people. That is on my right. I have beautiful lady Joy Mango joining us. Uh, she is a digital democracy fellow at Creco, and we also have Brian Sengeli right beside beside her. She's he's also a digital democracy fellow at Creco, and. Uh, We'll be talking with them today. Kari Sana. Thank you. Thank you Glad much. to have you. All right. So let me start with you, Brian. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you have done or what you do as a Digital Democracy Fellow. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, just to begin, uh, good morning to our viewers. Mm. Uh, as you've heard, my name is Sengeli Brian. I am a Digital Democracy Fellow at Creco. Mm -hmm. And beside that, I'm also... I work with the Center for Minority Rights Development, where we empower and um, champion for the rights of uh, indigenous minorities mm. and uh, indigenous communities in the country yeah. to, of course, avert their uh, democratic rights in the country. Mm -hmm. So we, through that, have been able to undertake various initiatives and also lead program that um, champion and prog um, I mean promote uh, the digital rights uh, especially of these communities mm. and their participation in the digital uh, democracy in this particular country and also across so we through this um, we've been able to have both successes and uh, challenges mm -hmm. but more so since uh, the digital economy or the digital uh, landscape is a dynamic Mm -hmm. um, think we are still catching up so we're trying to catch up with it mm -hmm. and that's why we are struggling or striving every day to mm -hmm. ensure that each and every person has a chance to participate uh, fully in this particular uh, landscape of mm -hmm. uh, the uh, I mean development okay great amazing thing that you're doing there and maybe we will be as as we go we will tell us more on what you are doing and yeah. how you've um enabled them get you know to where they are in the, in the digital mm -hmm. space let me get to you joy <coughs> um tell us a bit about that what you do uh, my name is joy mango thank you very much stephanie for having me in studio today um, so I'm currently a fellow at CRECO for the Digital Democracy Fellowship. I'm also part of the legal team at Shani and Company Advocates. Uh, I also am also a member of the Wakili Wawatoto. So Wakili Wawatoto is powered by NCAJ. Mm -hmm. That's the National Commission for Administrative Justice. And what we do at Wakiliwa Watoto, maybe this is how, mm -hmm. uh, so far before Kreko, how we have been helping in um, digital democracy, but it's been mostly for children. So uh, we've taught a lot of children in many schools how to stay safe in online spaces because, you know, children are very vulnerable yeah. in such spaces. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we've been teaching them about grooming, about misinformation, mm -hmm. how to tell apart who is telling you the truth, who is trying to take advantage of you, how to even, we've even taught their parents how to guide your child, how to protect your child from these preys, these predators mm -hmm. that are online, that are trying to prey on your child, trying to change your child into something they're not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Wonderful things that you're doing right there on promoting digital rights. And when you talk about uh, digital rights, we think about freedom mm -hmm. and everything. So looking at fake news, um, we, 
we see a lot of information out here on the social platforms and uh, some people think that, you know, it's my right. Uh, I can put out anything. So why are you following me? Don't unfollow me if you, if you feel like what I'm posting is, is not news. You know, it's, it's fake information. So it's my space. I do what with, I, I want with my space. It's my social media platform after all. So what do you have to say about this? Let me start with you, Brian, and then I come to you, Joy. Well, the space of um, well, the issue of misinformation is a big it's a big deal, especially in the social media journalism, mm -hmm. because you realize that um, majority of the users are the youth, and these are the population that is um, vulnerable to uh, missing this information. And therefore, it's very important for them to have the skills to be able to identify uh, the issue, uh, I mean, fake news, propaganda, mm -hmm. because, um, you realize that the moment you are poisoned by misinformation, you tend to uh, react to it. And the moment you react to it, it can be negative. And therefore, it's very important for us to develop uh, necessary skills to combat this. When you speak of misinformation, in our country, it's not a new thing. It has been there, and it's something that is uh, perpetrated not only by the small people, but also We've seen senior uh, government officials uh, being the perpetrators of uh, fake news. Mm. And apart from them, we've seen also media playing a very uh, critical role mm -hmm. in advancing fake news. And therefore, it's, it, it needs a multi-sectoral approach for us to fight the issue. Because the moment it, um, it goes beyond that, the, the effect is actually dire because even those people who, um, who spread fake news, mm -hmm. they, they should be aware that they are not only disturbing others, but they are also putting their own lives at, um, at risk. How because, so? B because, for instance, uh, for instance, you are sharing information that is not correct. And majority of the, situ uh, I mean, in situations where we are having a crisis, for instance, either a political crisis, a health crisis, or even social unrest. Those are the times that fake news, misinformation always thrive. Mm -hmm. Because people um, are out there busy looking for solutions, um, looking for how they are going to contain the situation, uh, either save themselves or also uh, their loved ones. And it's because of this that they are exposed to uh, the misinformation, they are vulnerable to misinformation. And therefore, they tend to behave or tend to uh, react mm -hmm. uh, based on their emotions. Yeah? And it's very dangerous because we've seen this uh, manifest in different ways. For instance, we've seen uh, during the uh, 2007 ele uh, general elections, we've mm. seen some instances in 20 se during 2017 general elections, and a few instances yeah. Uh, during the 2022 general elections, whereby someone shares information that is not correct, and therefore the communities or people within the communities react differently, mm -hmm. and then we may have we, we will have chaos. And the moment we have chaos either in Nairobi, if uh, you stay within Nairobi, you are affected. You don't go to job. If you have a business, it's affected. So it it affects you in one way or the mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Great. What what is your take, Joy? Um, just as you said, Stephanie, someone can post honestly whatever they want on their page, and that's protected by the Constitution. That is their freedom mm -hmm. to express themselves. Yeah? But then, now you as the person consuming this information, you have to be smart. You have to think about it. Who is this mm -hmm. I'm getting this information from? It's the same way. I can't be <coughs> here talking to you about health issues you get you yeah. have to get your information from strategic from key personnel mm -hmm. you understand you have to be able to verify the information you're getting even if i'm the one telling you this is what the law says you're allowed to ask what exactly mm -hmm. ask for a reference point so that you're not just consuming information blindly you do not know where it's coming from also um 
the many influencers. Remember the other day, Morara Kebaso was mm. expressing himself mm. and he got arrested and charged. Yeah, in that moment, we saw the judiciary, we saw courts coming to at least protect the law and say, yes, in as much as he has freedom of expression, in as much as you, you wanted to charge him for something he has not done, mm -hmm. he still does have that freedom of expression. And he is coming from a point of authority. You understand? Yeah. So if you're consuming information, you have to understand who it is you're getting this information from. Also, you have to look at um, how people like to consume information nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, instead of someone watching the news, they would rather go on Twitter and look at a thread. Now, you see, we discourage that. Okay. We encourage find news from proper channels. Because in other channels, in someone else's page, when you have just said, Mutata Kwambia, it's my page. If you don't like it, and follow. And follow Go me. follow someone else. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah? So if you want credible information, follow credible sources. Follow Y254. Follow KBC. Exactly. Follow. Exactly. Instead of following someone else who watched Y254 and is interpreting it for you how they understood. Mm -hmm. Now you see the effect of that is that this person may interpret it emotionally or based on whatever experience they have had already, mm -hmm. yeah? And you, who if you had gotten the information from the right source, would have interpreted it differently. Differently. Yeah. All right. So one way, one key way to combat misinformation from just following anyone and everyone is in as much as you'll consume information from everywhere, try and find the credibility, try and find the most credible source mm -hmm. of that information. That information. Yeah. And I love what you've said because, you know, um, with the revolution that's happening, people are in the digital space, really, and how they consume news is different from how five years ago people were consuming news. Someone may not sit down and watch TV. Still, maybe the baby boomers are still watching news at 9 p.m., sit down, watch uh, what KBC is bringing, which is good. But someone uh, else, a Gen Z, might prefer getting their news from Twitter. But we, get, we still get uh, the media houses having pages on Twitter. So how about they get to these pages that are actually verified to give, um, credible to give um, verified information out there. So there's still that option, r uh, really, so that when you get other information, then you're able to know that this is fake information. Let me ask you, Brian, um, you, you gave uh, good examples of how we have experienced misinformation, the spread of misinformation. What fuels this? Um, Apart from political um, events, because in Kenya, you know, that's where people are very emotional and, and, and whatnot. What else fuels um, the spread of misinformation and fake news? Um, fake news is fueled by quite a number of uh, factors. And one of the things that uh, fuel uh, misinformation, uh, fake news, is one... Um, the digital illiteracy of the people or the users mm -hmm. of social media because for instance um, a, 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 an article has been shared mm -hmm. online and you see as Kenyans um, we tend to uh, use much on social media there was a survey, a, a survey that was done that indicated that uh, Kenya is leading in terms of uh, social media usage mm -hmm. And therefore, that means that we are using social media more uh, in terms of getting news uh, updated, uh, getting updated, and also um, mm -hmm. getting ourselves in touch uh, with the, out the, 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 the world outside. So when you look at it, the uh, majority of the people doesn't have the skills to identify mm -hmm. which is fake news and which is, uh, which is a fact. Mm -hmm. People tend to share information as they receive it. It's called uh, forward as received. Mm. So <laughs> our work is Forded just many times. clearing and forwarding. <laughs> you, you receive information, <laughs> you forward to your friends. You've not uh, verified whether this information is correct or not. Mm -hmm. And for instance, I'll, I'll use the, uh, the recent um, 
um, social unrest where we had maandamano mm -hmm. the gen z maandamano there, there, there were a lot of misinformation around the, around that mm -hmm. we saw info i mean images being shared that um, did not originate from uh, nairobi it was actually from other countries mm -hmm. we had information that was shared that was not correct and therefore because young people did not have um, maybe the skills to be able to fact check, uh, to be able to cross-reference the information. So they, they, they fall for it and they believe it. Because you see, even, even um, um, they say that a lie that has been reshared several times, it, <laughs> it tends to be Believable. To like it is a truth, but it's yeah. not. So it is because of the majority or... Um, the, the euphoria that the majority is sharing the information, the mm -hmm. majority is talking about it, and therefore we fall for it. Yeah. So someone said that we need to, the moment you are infected or injected or uh, infested with misinformation, <laughs> you need to be aware of the majority. Mm -hmm. Because um, collective ignorance does not mean that <laughs> it's, it's going to be wisdom. <laughs> so you have to be aware of that. Secondly, uh, we have the social media. Mm -hmm. Social media has been a uh, breeding ground for uh, fake news, propaganda. And compared to traditional uh, ways of communication, uh, information flowed very slowly because we depended on either radio, TV, which uh, it was slow way of communicating. But social media is almost very, instant. Very fast, yeah, instant, yeah, very fast. you know. You go to Twitter, everyone is tweeting, it's instant. So information uh, actually spreads very fast. Mm -hmm. So it fuels um, either propaganda, it's fake news. Before you confirm it's true, it has spread. Yeah, Because fake news, it actually spreads faster than uh, the, the truth. The tr so yeah, it becomes a news. challenge. Another thing that fuels it is that we've seen um, a very catchy uh, media headlines. <laughs> either used by uh, media houses or uh, newspapers. Mm -hmm. Very catchy clickbait. Um, headlines that <laughs> they, they use it as a clickbait because <laughs> people tend to click it. Yeah. They want to, they, were, they to are very curious, it. they want to find out um. what is really happening. Yeah. And I usually use an example of, uh, there's an, ex um, uh, an example where the, 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 there's a media house that used this in, uh, during the impeachment of the um, former, former deputy president, deputy president mm -hmm. Gashagwa Banks table for his boss. And that thing actually was uh, <laughs> misinterpreted by many people. <laughs> it was taken out of context. Because you realize that those people in the village, they don't know that it is either sarcasm, humor, or anything. Yeah, they, they take it, it as it is. As it is. Ah. And because you see, uh, especially those people in the rural interior. They usually depend on either social media, WhatsApp groups, and they actually act as uh, echo chambers. So the moment someone has shared something that is incorrect, everyone else believes it. Mm -hmm. And therefore it becomes a challenge for them even to verify whether it's true or not. They start discussing. You go in the interior, you hear people discussing rumors. Mm -hmm. It's not true, but they are discussing it. They believe it. And the whole so village knows. And the whole village knows it. <laughs> so it becomes a challenge. And then um, another challenge uh, that we've been able to see is um, the use of uh, or exploitation of uh, emotions. The, the articles that are fake most of the time appeal to emotions. Mm -hmm. So because someone is appealing to emotions, you tend to react out of it. It is charged emotionally. So it is meant to provoke uh, your emotional uh, stature. Mm. So you, you tend to uh, share that information or believe even without cross-checking whether it's true or not. Mm -hmm. So it is very important for us to, <coughs> to have the responsibility of ensuring that the information we share is, is correct because we are not only putting others in danger but also ourselves. Okay. Yes, we have the law that protects our freedom of expression. But now what happens after expression, uh, after expressing yourself? Because words cannot be taken back. Mm -hmm. The moment you say something that is wrong, it is going to uh, cause harm. And you saw harm, it cannot be 
uh, cured. When the damage is done, yeah, it's, it's already done. It's already done. Okay. So it's up to us to ensure that we uh, become people who are going to uh, maintain the social media hygiene. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, great. You've mentioned a lot of points and uh, which are very key for us to know, you know, on what really triggers us to, to spread this misinformation. So when you're very emotional about something, relax first <laughs> before yeah, you share and everything. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned skills. People need to have skills. And I want to ask you, Joy, to tell us what are the skills that we need to have as people who are empowered and who have the knowledge what skills do we know, need to have in order to uh, counter and not be perpetrators uh, of spreading fake news? Mm, maybe before I get to the skills question, mm -hmm. uh, maybe allow me to build a sure. bit on what Brian just told us, mm -hmm. in addition to everything he just said. Mm -hmm. And I like that you brought out how media houses can also spread misinformation by that intriguing you with clickbait, by that intriguing your emotional side, you are triggered. You are triggered to follow whatever it is mm -hmm. they're talking about. You don't think twice about it. <coughs> In as much as um, I mentioned media houses as a credible source of information, you have to realize that these are also people. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And there is also politics in media. Mm -hmm. Yeah? But Okay, l let me interject you mm -hmm. a bit. Uh, knowing that how media operates, um, the headlines, especially now, mm -hmm. I, I understand that the media is also going with what the people in this era want. And, you know, Gen Z want that thing that you will really catch them and get their attention and want to read it. So is that regarded as fake information or is it just something to to get you interested and then in the story as you read the story then you will get the actual information because there's no way they will tell you that uh Gashagwa banged <laughs> his now the question you know, Stephanie the, becomes the table how many didn't. people actually get to the watching and listening to the story because many people will simply read the headline mm -hmm. yeah and tell you hiya how kuskia Gashagwa banged the table on his boss <laughs> Okay, okay. You see, mm -hmm. um, and that's why, okay, again, at times, uh, yes, the media house is here presenting the news to you. And as I have just mentioned, even media houses do have politics behind them. Yeah, they do have supporters, they do have these politicians funding them. Yeah, and as you have said, these other media houses are leaning towards uh, the Gen Z movement who are not exactly pro government you understand mm -hmm. yeah uh, now these media houses are choosing sides you get now there's news that we are trying to say the government has done this well and there's this pro gen z media house and gen z are no we're not friends of the government now you see this media house has to find a way to present its information in a way that their audience will like it Mm -hmm. Because we want this audience to come back and see what it is we are putting out. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So even in as much as, yes, we want to trust on media houses, I would say again, find the most credible source of information. If we are talking about a law, the other day there was this bill to extend the terms to seven years. Yeah? Very many people had not read the bill, but sent the email to see it. Mm -hmm. Now you sent an email <coughs> that you do not know says what, you do not know is against what. You need to understand what you're talking about mm -hmm. before you say it. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and maybe also in addition to things that fuel misinformation uh, is during crisis, things happen very fast. Like during Mandamano, we couldn't wait for 8 p.m., 9 p.m. to go back to the house to see what's the news has to see. The update, we yeah. need updates in real time. Mm -hmm. In real time. Now that's where a uh, part of misinformation is spread. Because while we are still waiting for credible information to be gathered and put out, a lot of misinformation has already been spread. A lot of people have already been misdirected. Uh, and a final, <laughs> a final thing that fuels misinformation uh -huh. is uh, 
social media algorithm mm -hmm. yeah you know okay. algorithms push for what is liked best yeah and people choose what intrigues their emotion they choose what appeals to them and not exactly what is truth truth right. doesn't always appeal Win. to everyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah true yeah uh, now back to your question mm -hmm. on one of the skills. I think I'm still on the media houses, but it's okay. Maybe I have a bias. <laughs> I mean, have a bias because uh, I work in the, the media, media as a journalist because I know that media tries to be as, um, you know, for the people, mm -hmm. you know, mostly for the people. I understand that there can be some influence, but I know that whatever information where it's, you know, the, the media, the journalists are guarded by ethics and have to give credible information and all, but maybe it's something that the media can work <laughs> on look at working on. But let's go to uh, the, the skills. What is it that people need to know about? Um, first of all, these, the simple skills, uh, while not everyone has the um, critical thinking skills. Not everyone can discern what is truth and what is not. I feel like the most simple way to find key information mm -hmm. is just how I told you, verify, seek verification. Even if I'm the one telling you um, the mm -hmm. bill says one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. ask me for the bill. Tell me to share the bill with you so that you can read it for yourself. Okay. If a pastor is telling you the Bible says this. Confirm. Confirm. Ask what verse, what chapter, what book you mm -hmm. get. Mm -hmm. If the media is telling you um, the president in his speech today says this, said this. So you normally see they play a clip of what the president, president said. exactly said. Mm -hmm. Now that is what I'm calling verification. After someone has told you, eh, Gashagwa banged the table on his boss. Say, yes, well, show me where clear. it has been stated. Verify every information you've been given. That's one. Two, just like you said, Stephanie, mm -hmm. if something is uh, intriguing you emotionally, take a step back. Once in a while, just take a step back. Wait for the emotion to fade off. Once the reason comes back, now try and consume the same information again. Mm -hmm. Now from a point of reason and not emotion. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and maybe just to finish off, uh, for this shared links, this forwarded many times, you know, <laughs> yeah. clearing and forwarding, look at the links. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this link a, a reliable source? Can you rely on, you know, it's like those two messages people normally send. Naivas is giving uh, vouchers. You just have to share this link to 25 people. And you clearly <laughs> see, he link I just mentioned at a Naivas. Naivas our jacka kwa site yao. Naivas our jacka kwa site yao. You see things like that. Yeah. Honestly, at times you just have to step back, look at what this person is presenting to you. Reason with it and you will see clearly. I. And that's something else. Once you doubt information, seek verification. Uh -huh. yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Wow, I love that. And, you know, it's not just on uh, the news that we get uh, um, online, we get on the media, but it's also news um, such as those ones, you know, to, um, to sort of bait you to get to the link and then it can corrupt you it can affect you in some yeah. to some point uh get a virus on your phone you know get you to send money because people have been scammed through through such so whatever information it is really uh, make sure that it is verified actually it is really important for mm -hmm. people to realize to notice that uh, to know that uh fake news misinformation is not presented as misinformation you won't look at it and immediately know, ah, in this is misinformation. You know, the way in the morning segment, you are talking about laced cookies. Mm -hmm. That's what they look like. You'd have two cookies put in front of your eyes, and they don't look different. They're the same thing. You mm -hmm. wouldn't know the truth from a lie until you consume it. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Until you actually think about it. You remember uh, years ago, I think 10 years ago, there was this time... 
uh, it was trending news that quails and quail eggs can treat anything and everything. And people bought quails people like crazy. People bought quails, people <laughs> ate quails. <laughs> Everywhere you'd go, you'd be served ah, quails. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was like just hot time. air. Literally nothing came from that. And again, juicy tena ni meona, dragon fruits. Everyone is eating dragon fruits. Everyone is, Everyone really is selling dragon, dragon fruits. fruits. You've been told, yes, dragon fruits are the new quails. Dragon mm -hmm. fruits are the new liquid gold. <laughs> <laughs> lies. Yeah, lies. Lies. Have you verified that from a when, doctor? When your doctor would just tell you, hey, it's a father, it means a dawa. Do that is a dawa to quite You mm -hmm. know? And uh, yeah, we, we need to mention that as well. Coming back to you, uh, to, to you, Brian. Uh, we have mentioned on the skills and everything, but talk about those people who are in the marginalized areas, because those are the people that you work with. Um, are they the most, looking at who are the most vulnerable to, to fake information? Is it Gen Z or is it, are they at a better <laughs> point position because uh, they have uh, the digital know-how, they, they, they know how to um, now, as a result even of this interview, to know how to distinguish between fake and bad, or is it the people who are marginalized and they're just even getting on board, getting to know how to use the digital platforms, who are the most affected? Uh, <coughs> when it comes to the issue of uh, fake news um, and misinformation, mm. actually everyone is affected, but the level at which uh, they are affected differs. Mm -hmm. And de it depends with uh, various factors. When you speak of uh, <coughs> uh, the indigenous and marginalized communities, mm -hmm. <coughs> majority of these communities, they reside in the rural areas. And uh, when you look at the setup, the, 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 the geographical uh, architecture of the rural areas, majority of these areas, number one, doesn't have the electricity, doesn't have the technological Mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure. So <coughs> majority of them, first they are having challenges with uh, internet connectivity. They cannot utilize um, uh, technology effectively and efficiently like the rest of the populations. So those are the challenges that, that they are facing. They don't have electricity, they can't access technology, and the few that has the privilege of using technology, they are now the the media outlets for the rest of the society or the community. Mm. They, 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 <laughs> they are the source of information for the rest of the community. So anything and they say, they anything goes. That, anything they say goes. That uh, uh, if anything that corrupt, that can might corrupt the information shared by these co uh, individuals, mm. then the whole community is doomed. So majority of these communities, you realize that they rely on and as, as uh, I mentioned, uh, media groups, either WhatsApp groups, mm -hmm. Facebook groups, uh, where they share information. And these groups, they act as echo chambers. So once information has been uh, shared there, whether the information is correct or not, these people doesn't have uh, the, 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 the literacy to verify whether mm -hmm. this information is correct or not because mm -hmm. of the high illiteracy levels in these areas. So it becomes a challenge for them. So when you look at the vulnerability, you realize that those people are more vulnerable to the effects of um, uh, misinformation. Mm -hmm. And come to think of it whereby we have now the, 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 the more vulnerable members of the community, like women, we have mm -hmm. uh, the children, we have uh, persons with disabilities, we have the aged. Mm. These people, in case of any um, unforeseen circumstance that might happen in the community, they are the most affected. Mm -hmm. So you l when you look at it, it is an issue that um, affects each uh, demographic in a very unique way. She, said, uh, she mentioned about the mm -hmm. issue of um, believing information that is not correct. We need to embrace uh, skepticism. Yeah. What you see might not mm -hmm. be uh, the correct uh, information. You need to verify whether uh, this information is correct. When someone says that okra water heals <laughs> cervical cancer, mm -hmm. go, to, uh, go online, yeah. cross-check that information with 
uh, multiple sources. Mm -hmm. Check whether the, the, the sources that has shared this information, is it reliable, is it genuine, mm -hmm. or is it uh, catfish accounts? Yeah. Because we have accounts, it has, yes, the logo of, of Y254, Mm -hmm. But now it is a not parody all, account. Yeah, not all you know pages with the the logo of white five four is actually white yeah, five four. You need not, to yeah. confirm. You need to confirm. And that's by the verification, the tick for yes. for mm. some sites, and even the the follower, the numbers yeah. can tell that this is a fake account. Yeah, it, it is. It is very correct. Mm. It, it's only that nowadays um, majority of the media, either media house or media companies or social media owners, they have. Uh, they, they are now trading in uh, the issue of uh, hygiene or social media hygiene with they 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 are, they are um, prioritizing business over uh, uh, what do you call it um, I'm looking for the perfect term mm -hmm. but for instance when you look at Twitter before for you to be verified as a journalist there was a very uh. very long process to be verified but nowadays you just have to pay. Uh, eight hundred dollars, yeah. and then you are verified. Elon so Musk it, it, it becomes <laughs> a challenge. I actually remember Larry yeah. Madowo. Uh, he was really angered, but yeah. it was really triggered mm -hmm. by that commercializing of the verification tick. Yeah. Because yeah. for him, when he first got the blue tick, the verified on mm. Twitter, yeah. it was because he was a source of reliable information yeah. exactly. internationally. Yes. That's also how he landed his job at BBC, yeah? Mm -hmm. So when you turn that and commercialize it, and anyone, now anyone can, get can buy the blue tick, anyone can be Donald Trump. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. Anyone can be Larry Madowo. Mm. And I just true. have to pay for that tick. Then I will write anything mm. I want to write. Mm -hmm. So they are trading yeah. the in the, 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 the ethics having. and the principles mm. of journalism. So it becomes a challenge even for the rest of the communities mm -hmm. to know whether is this the uh, legit Y254 page. Okay. Because if you are not keen, and then you also fall for it because it has the logo, it has everything. So it, it becomes also a challenge mm. uh, unless it is... The, the extent of the damage is can only be um, can only be understood or known by those who are ready, and by by ready I mean they are already uh, armed themselves with the information. They have the skills mm -hmm. to be able to identify whether this is uh, the real channel or not, right. so that they can combat it with the with the facts. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, uh, now looking at children now th you, you've said it affects everyone but they are most vulnerable and i think that even in the political scene they're also the the targets because yeah. whatever they're told by this influencers or influential figures in the political space they believe and they take it as gospel without verifying mm. and that's the de problem we have in kenya and we need to do something about it honestly now coming to children because um you handle children as well so how do how can parents uh keep their children safe even in the digital spaces even you know they they face the problem of cyber bullying they face the problem of getting everything and anything uh in the internet really so how can parents protect their children um when it comes to children and the online space you have to understand that uh even away from the online space children are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Children are people that consume information as it is put out. Yeah? Uh, for online spaces, parents need to understand that a lot of what we consume online is um, age, okay, the age ranking is for Western countries. Mm. And you see, for them, uh, younger ages are exposed to way more than in what African countries, mm -hmm. look at Netflix, what the age 16 plus, for us, we would be like, ah, this is not 21. <laughs> yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the same has to be translated even to applications, even mm -hmm. to games. You remember, um, for, for people who are very social media and celeb love celebrities, mm -hmm. I remember there's this one time, Kim Kardashian, mm -hmm. uh, Kim Kardashian's child 
was on Roblox and someone shared a link to her sex tape. My goodness. You see, Roblox is an online site for children's games. Yeah. How does a link to a sex, sex tape, tape end up there? You see, uh -huh. now you have to be kin. You have to watch everything that your child is going through, whether it is games, mm. whether it is educational sites. You have to look at them. You have to be present. That's one thing that is very important, actually, in today's age, and children and the media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nowadays, okay, nowadays very many parents have turned to a habit of, you know, I'm busy, I need to keep my child busy, so yeah. I buy them a tablet. That's true. Yeah. So when I'm working, mm -hmm. my child can be on their phone doing whatever it is they're doing. But you don't know what it is they're doing. Now, um, that attention mm -hmm. that you're not giving your child, someone else is. In that online space, someone else is giving them that attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now you see something that the digital age, the digital era has come to do is um, pull children further away from their parents. So if you're not a present parent, if you're not actively mm -hmm. trying to be there, then you lose touch with your child. In a sense that even you're not the first source of information. I remember mm. growing up, uh, being as a child, we used to be told your dad is your first Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah? Me yeah. I remember even growing up, before I Google something, you I'd be like, Daddy, in I in know. Me. Yeah. But nowadays you run to Google. They know everything. Exactly. Even before you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even before they ask you, kwanza ni wewe wanakuja kukufunza. Mm -hmm. yeah? you, need, you actually need to be a present parent so that you can monitor what is it this child is doing on the phone, who is this child mm -hmm. interacting with on the phone. Like you said, there's a lot of cases of cyberbullying. Yeah. And a lot of them go unreported. Simply because the child is afraid of the parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Ama the child has no connection with the parent. My mom is always working. And daddy, daddy is also on his laptop. And me, I'm on my tablet. So everyone mm -hmm. has their life. So, you know, I yeah? deal with most. And stuff. now that's where grooming comes in. Because then a 40-something-year-old man in, I don't know, India, somewhere like that, will be like, ah. Today you posted a very sad photo. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Now you see, that old man has done something mommy and daddy don't do. Mm -hmm. They never have that chance to look up from their computers and say, eh, today the child is kidogo quiet. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So now once this old person online has generated, has built that trust relationship with a child, you see now that was a predator who's found a way to connect with this prey, and that is how grooming happens. Mm -hmm. That is how you start seeing children on sexual sites. That's how, eh, unasikia sasa mtu ananza kushanga, misi dream mtoto wangu alitoa apizi vitu. The entire time, all you needed to do was be present. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. For parents out there, you really need to look at who your child is interacting with online, and as I said, verify. Mm -hmm. Because, as Brian said, there's a lot of catfishing nowadays. Someone can use my photo, and is a 42-year-old man. Use my photo, use my name, mm -hmm. and you, you think, yeah, my daughter has this 23-year-old mentor. Yeah, yeah, I know <laughs> her, yes. Entire time, it's someone catfishing using my image. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be able to verify who what games are this? Are they Children age appropriate? Mm -hmm. What movies are this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Watch a movie before your child watches it. I know many parents hate yeah. it, even children themselves. At a mimi when I was a child, it was a very no no why that is being, you know. Yeah. You as a child you don't understand it, but it is for your own good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Allow your parents 
to protect you, to shield you from the many dangers that are out here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially in the online space, I think. Especially at that time, I found my nephew talking to someone online w through the games Roblox. I was like, who's this person you're talking to? <laughs> like, no, my friend from the game. I'm like, hey. Exactly. You know, you need to know really who they're talking to. Especially in gaming culture, mm -hmm. anyone and everyone games. Games don't have age limits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's That's normally true. three and above two and above mm -hmm. you know and above goes all the way to six hundred you know <laughs> <laughs> so, so you your child be... is playing with as you how many year old person know, on the other end and you don't know what, what they're telling they them conversing. exactly yeah. so that's that's very important for parents to take note of and uh we also mentioned um the roles you you had mentioned that it, it needs um it's a multi stakeholder it needs a multi stakeholder approach for us to to achieve uh, success in countering misinformation and disinformation. I know that for sure influencers have a role in this as much we have talked about media houses we've talked about um, you know the sites and everything, but influencers, what role do they have because they're also out to look for you know, uh, business and everything, they get paid. Uh, they also, and people trust them, that's the thing. And they get people to get on board on some products and things, you know, which are false, not really recognized. And I know f um, the recent incidents where there was a lady, a prominent lady who passed on because of going to this particular um, place to to get uh, is it a liposuction or yeah the, the surgery and it was not a recognized institution but it has it was out there being promoted by some influencers so to some extent i'm seeing this as fake information or false information misguiding people uh what role uh, do influencers play let me ask you brian uh, <coughs> influencers play a very uh, critical role however when you look at uh, what are their goals in that because when you look at it vis-a-vis uh, -vis the objectivity of the information shared, it, it actually overweighs uh, the objectivity of the information shared. Mm -hmm. So they priori what they prioritize is uh, cash. If you are inf an influencer, mm. she approaches you to uh, promote Y254, um, then uh, her stake is lower than what you are offering. Mm -hmm. And you maybe you want to you want someone to promote or you want her to promote another media house and the stakes are high. Of course, they'll always go for the uh, highest bidder. So it it becomes a challenge even for them mm -hmm. to uh, maintain or be able to um, maintain the objectivity and also uh, maintain that or observe the hygiene. Mm -hmm. of, of the of the kind of information they are sharing mm. so we, we've seen instances where majority of the uh, influencers they're actually influencing for something they don't know themselves majority mm. of them you, you, even you see those um, who are influencing for um, either betting sites do they know how to bet if you ask them they don't know how to bet they don't know how uh, the history of that particular company they don't know whether that company is out to uh, fleece and scam people, or mm -hmm. it is on a, on a legit mission. So they can't tell themselves. What they are there is they have been offered cash, and because they have uh, the, the influence out there, they have numbers either on Instagram, they just take the gig for their cash. Mm -hmm. So it becomes also a challenge, not even for the not only for their followers, but also for themselves. The moment um, adversity strikes, either that company or uh, that particular institution is closed down, and then it is even a shock to themselves. Mm -hmm. They start saying, even me, I didn't know. In their innocence. In their innocence. <laughs> so it is critical even for our social media influencers to be able to, uh, to do a background check for the either media, um, the companies they're influencing for or they're working for mm -hmm. so that they can't uh, that they, they shouldn't be uh, the agents of fake news uh, demagoguery mm -mm. and also 
uh, misinformation because it is a new thing in the town. Every other person is going for influencers. Whether you are starting a church, you go for influencers. <laughs> so Just it find is someone in that space and you It know, is you a new trend that. in town <laughs> and it should be, uh, I, I can't say it should be regulated, but it should be observed keenly mm. so that we have hygiene in that. Okay. Yes. And Actually, for Stephanie, for mm -hmm. you to see how, uh, what big role influencers play, think Kamala Harris. Mm. She was bringing out celebrities yeah. in True. her campaigns. That's how big a role influencers mm. play in decision making, True. in yeah. passing <coughs> of information. Mm -hmm. uh, like I was telling you before, you need to be keen. Now you see, influencers are celebrating their freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And just as Brian has said, at the back of their mind, it's cash. True. Yeah, what is driving them? Their main objective is at the end of the day, let me make money. Now there's a different tier, what I would call top tier influencers. These are people who will do their due diligence. Mm -hmm. The way Brian has said, find out about this company. What are they offering? Are there harmful sides mm -hmm. to what they are offering? And now you see this top tier influencers, this knowledgeable influencers will say no. To that deal okay. or they'll ask you could you fix this first mm. and i will help you push your product however much you want me to mm -hmm. Mm. yeah the same way uh for me i know if i want anything financial advice my influencer of choice is just ivy mm -hmm. you see mm. now because she has built the brand around exactly, integrity and she has built that brand of integrity by the time she is coming to tell you as her audience you should i think you should invest in one two three four five you are confident mm. yeah and even if you go back to the institution that she is advertising for you will find that information consistently there yeah mm -hmm. uh, now something else uh, I like about now this top tier influencers is that you see just the way you have said they protect the brand they know how to protect brands and um, for this verified influencers there is that duty of care that they have to their audience yeah compared to an unverified influencer someone just blew up mm -hmm. the other day dancing <coughs> on TikTok mm -hmm. why would I take financial advice Mm. Yeah. Now, which brings me to my point of to be influenced is your choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Influencers are your choice. Mm -hmm. If you choose to be influenced by person B instead of A, mm -hmm. you can't come crying <laughs> that when they this misled information you. is readily there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. Yeah. And, and in fact, you see, I mm -hmm. think in our country we have a challenge or we have a problem with that because someone does something funny it, it's either funny instantly or becomes something a sensation <laughs> sensational then yes. tomorrow that person is considered an, an influencer so how do what do they know about it tomorrow na kwambia ndo ununua shamba pale they don't have any yeah kidogo kidogo yeah. after umenunua shamba you hear ah no 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 actually that scheme was entirely <laughs> bought out yeah. <laughs> yeah it was actually a scam exactly which yeah. brings me back to credibility where are you getting your information from mm -hmm. can you trust this person mm -hmm. yeah how do you know this person is this person a credible <laughs> source of information yeah mtu anakuja anataka kukufunza accounts yeah and they blew up on twitter for eating githeri you remember githeri man, <laughs> githeri man i'm yeah. glad he, man. he stuck to that yeah. and akina ugali man imagine them coming coming to tell you mm -hmm. ah no, no no actually for financial advice do one two three four i'm mm -hmm. coming to give you legal advice mm -hmm. so you're better <laughs> off getting legal advice from a lawyer yeah so why are you going to look for legal advice from an influencer yeah. exactly if you see, want financial advice go mm -hmm. to the bank yeah, when, you, when you look at kenyans they always have a say in everything they are actually experts Every, in everything yeah <laughs> go to that's the thing about kenyans you guys are giving exp i mean uh, information and expertise in everything <laughs> so any other kenyan you meet a kenyan you talk them to them about either health issues they have a say in that mm -hmm. and they'll tell you what 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 you should do about your health your they health should, they and they're not doctors they have they're not doctors nothing on yes, health but they have information either they uh -huh. have learned from tiktok or elsewhere 
So they believe that they have necessary information to guide you. You talk to them about either fitness, they'll tell you about fitness. Mm -hmm. I mean, finance, they'll tell you about finance. So it becomes a challenge dealing with people who think <laughs> they, they know they, they know everything, <laughs> and, and that's th that's why we need to protect ourselves. Even yeah. as we come to a close on this conversation, remember, I love that uh, what you both have said uh, on uh, the people that you follow. Get credible people that you follow, have yeah. credible information. You know, influencers are there, but it's your decision on who influences you. I love it. So, as a way of closing, what would you want to part with? Let me start with you, Joy, and then finish with your brand. And how can people also reach you on your platforms? Um, hmm. My parting statement uh, is for everyone to be keen with whatever information mm -hmm. they are consuming online. That's one. Two, for parents mm -hmm. to honestly and genuinely be involved in their children's digital life. The online space is not safe for children. Uh, thirdly, you who is putting out information, whether as an influencer, you're simply blogging on your page or just posting, kindly be keen to whether if, if it's a joke, caption it as that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell people, let people know by the way, this is a sarcastic post I am making. Ama, this is criticism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let them know also if you're not an expert at something let the people who you're talking to know you're not coming from a point mm -hmm. of no you're coming from a point of opinion mm -hmm. yeah uh, okay. and if you want to reach me you can always follow me at nana mango on all social media all right channels yes awesome thank you very much joy <laughs> thank you. and to you brian uh, for me i'd say that um uh, social media is it is actually the biggest feedback loop um, that we have where everyone else uh, biases mm -hmm. is being confirmed constantly and the moment your bias is constantly being confirmed and then you become vulnerable to misinformation uh, fake news and other uh, issues mm -hmm. and therefore it's very important for us to uh, ensure that we have critical thing i mean crit we embrace skepticism uh, we do uh, we have the critical thinking skills mm -hmm. and also we do our due diligence with the information that we re either receive or share with others because we shall be protecting ourselves and we shall be protecting our loved one and uh, and everyone uh, in that particular space uh, lastly we need to be um, the advocates of ensuring that our social media platforms are hygienic we need to maintain the mm -hmm. hygiene of these platforms because even truth that has been shared on unclean platforms it tends to be uh, suspicious so it is important for us to ensure that the platforms are very hygienic they are clean mm -hmm. and they um, it, it is actually um, it is good for everyone's uh, use whether they are children whether it's um, grown-ups mm -hmm. the vulnerable members of the society so that we have um, a, a good conversation, yeah? Because it, th these are platforms that we are um, consuming information, we are mm -hmm. sharing information, and it's critical of us to ensure that it's hygienic. As for, for the duty, duty bearers, it is important also to ensure that everyone else is safe. It's not about legislating. It's about ensuring that uh, we maintain um, a safe space for all Kenyans to engage. The government no need not to censor mm. um, the, the freedoms of expression. Let people express themselves. Mm -hmm. But the government has a duty <coughs> of ensuring that it does enough sensitization to the people to ensure that the people listening or uh, consuming information online, they have the know-how of distinguishing between what is fake and what is real. Right. And for the perpetrators, we need um, faster and urgent prosecutions. <laughs> yeah. All right. Otherwise, Great. Thank you so much. 
All right, awesome. Thank you very much, both of you. Uh, this has been very insightful. We appreciate your time here. That has been Brian Singili and Joy Mango. They're both Digital Democracy Fellows at uh, Creco. And we've been talking about organizing and resisting fake news. I hope you've taken something from this. The responsibility starts with you. Make sure that uh, your digital spaces, your social media is hygienic enough and be protective of what you consume. This is where we put a cup on it because Brian Sakwa will be coming up next with yet another 